Hi everyone, welcome back to the Weekly Politics Show. I'm Councillor Premier with co-host Councillor Andrew Wood. So in this section, we're going to talk about the Section 106. How much is it? Where is it? And where does it get spent? So, uh, Andrew, I'm going to pass it over over to you if you could just describe to our view viewers and listeners what is section 106 and answer those three basic questions which okay so i just lost you there peru but I'll, um... politics okay yeah um so there are three main sources of money that tower hamlets council get so one of them is called section 106 so when a developer uh builds a new building uh, they come to some agreement with Tower Hamlets Council that they will pay the council some money uh, for new infrastructure or whatever that they agree with the council. So, for example, Section, one, section 106 money has also been used you know, for job training, uh, for green initiatives, air quality improvements, uh, transport for London improvements, as well as, as more widely. We've also then got something called Community Infrastructure Levy, which was the replacement for Section 106. So from anything approved post April 2015 uh, would have paid community infrastructure levy and, and that's not a negotiated number like section 106 it's a mathematical formula for every square meter that you build you have to pay the council 280 pounds per square meter so that you know that adds up to a lot of money so if ASDA gets redeveloped on the Isle of Dogs uh, potentially that could be 50 million pounds of community infrastructure levy so it really adds up and then the third is is new homes bonus um, to give you some idea of the scale, um, and unfortunately this, th these numbers are a little bit old, but we, we had a major fire in, in Blackwall today that you may have seen on, on the news, and that's been a bit of a distraction, so I haven't got updated numbers. But to give you some idea, back in, in 2018, at that point we had uh, 110 million pounds of Section 106, and I know that number has gone up. We had at that point 44 million pounds of community infrastructure levy, or SIL for short, and I think that number is nearer 60 million. And at that point, we had 26 million pounds in new homes bonus, and that number is about 30 million pounds. So in total, we, today we've probably got about 200 million pounds sat in, in various bank accounts. And one of our problems is, is that we, with the exception of last year, uh, is the value of that money erodes because of inflation. So traditionally, inflation has been around you know, 2%. But our bank interest is only about 1%. So each year, we lose about 1% or the value of our reserves. Um, so if you add up all the reserves from everything, it add, adds up to about 500 million pounds. Uh, and in a sort of average year, we can lose 2.4 million pounds. And there was one three year period where the council's finance team estimated would lose, I think 22 million pounds over three years through inflation. So not spending this money because it sat in the bank account means that we, we sort of lose out. Uh, and the reason why we put this on the agenda is actually a journalist was approaching me yesterday sort of asking me about community infrastructure levy and how it's spent because 25 of it should be spent on on uh, something called local infrastructure uh, or um, i think it's called the neighborhood plot um and mayor john biggs have said that 25 should be spent on on local projects um not much of that money has been spent but you know 25 million pounds sorry 25 percent of you know 60 million pounds you know that's 50 million pounds it's a lot of money um, and the question the journalist was asking was, you know, well, how, how can we spend the money to best effect to, to help the wider community? And the council do these consultations, but um, and, and they do a good job in the consultations. But when you look at the outcome of it, it doesn't it doesn't really add up in terms of what I would think is value for money or what I think would actually benefit the community. Um, so, you know, it's one of the things and I say this to council officers as well. A lot of council officers don't seem to be aware that actually there is a lot of money sat in the bank account um, and a lot that you know and some of this money can be spent on quite a wide range of different things section 106 if you want to change what you spend it on you have to ask the developer but the developer pretty much nearly always says yes they're quite happy to repurpose it um, so for example new providence wharf where we had the the fire today um, they paid, I think, about five million pounds of Section 106. I don't think it's all been spent, but some of that Section 106 money was actually was spent on the cable um, in, um, sorry, on the mural in Cable Street, commemorating this of the 1930s battle uh, with fascism. And you know, so, so that, yes, and there's really interesting ways that you can spend Section 106 money if you think about it and 
And I think that's one of the things that we need to kind of talk about over the coming months is, is how we can spend Section 106, but especially SIL, because as I said, 25% of that money is meant to be spent locally on local projects. I, f I think we need to have a strategic discussion as well, how we do investments in Tower Hamlets. So I've been looking at how cities, um, so before I came onto the program at lunchtime, I looked at how other cities throughout the world have been looking at how they could use um, investment by the local authority to kickstart so like a virtuous cycle. So you got like innovative cities like Cleveland in America or Albuquerque, Austin. They're part of they're part of um, the community wealth building agenda. The uh, Democracy Collaborative, which came out of Cleveland, um, I think um, they they put this together. But so so it's literally like you got a limited pot of money. You got to, if you don't use it strategically, then it's wasted. So they they saw like channeling. The investment we haven't had those kind of discussions in Tower Hamlets. It just seems to be kind of like willy nilly, kind of who shouts the loudest gets it. You know, let's extend the pavement here, or if you've got an articulate councillor on the ward, then they could get the money spent on what the councillor wants it wants to get spent on, but not necessarily what's needed uh, for for the area. So a good example is Bartlett Park, which neighbours my ward. Um, there's money being spent but there wasn't any discussion eliminated a lot of issues but it could have gone the other way um, the, the, and it's willy nilly it's just one individual was very articulate and got the money spent in a specific way um, mm -hmm. but there isn't that kind of strategic thinking as to how do we kickstart um, economy or regenerate certain areas in our borough that are dilapidated or, or, or dying sort of issue. Yeah. Um, there isn't that kind of discussion. Um, Andrew, what's your, what's your thoughts? Have, 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 has anyone in the council come up with that, that kind of thinking or yourselves? As to... No, so I mean, I mean, I, I'll give you another example. So it is in our financial interest as residents of Tower Hamlets and as councillors that as many people as possible keep on working in the offices in Canary Wharf. Because if those offices stay empty, it will have a catastrophic uh, financial impact on us. So one of the things that we need to do is to encourage as many people to commute in from Kent and Essex into Canary Wharf. They won't do it you know, five days a week like they used to, but if they do it three days rather than two days a week, that's good for us because it means more office space is result. Uh, is required uh, and, and the reason why it's important for us is that 40 percent of the council's income comes from business rates and most of that 40 percent comes from places like canary wharf and, and the restaurants and shops there because if they close not just employment losses to us locally it's a loss of all of that income so for example one of the things i've really liked the idea of is, is a floating lido in the docks where you could actually swim in the docks you know that's good for a bunch of reasons in terms of swimming and health and all the rest of it but it you know with a range of other things, it might encourage that person sat at home in Kent, you know, actually, you know what, I'll go to the office tomorrow because I can have a swim at lunchtime. And I can't do that where I live in Kent. And again, that would be a very good strategic use of the money to make Canary Wharf more attractive because it will pay for itself. It will it will save some of that business rates income that we might otherwise lose, as well as improving other areas of Tower Hamlets, you know, so the tourism ministry, we need the tourists to come back to us. So we need the investment in Brick Lane and Columbia Road and, and all of the rest of it uh, to generate jobs and income for us. Definitely, but also spending on infrastructure to help say small independent businesses. Like I'm thinking out of the box, like why don't we, the council use section 106 to provide really good broadband Mm -hmm. for broadband or wireless everywhere like high quality and that will attract all these high high tech businesses into the area yeah and the whole thing will pay for itself but it's a good way of actually rege regenerating say so sort of like dilapidated retail areas kind of ish where you encourage these small business who don't need these kind of um uh don't need these kind of uh big spaces to operate and you know the, and it's going to generate spend and repurpose our economy in a certain way but it doesn't 
doesn't seem it doesn't seem that kind of thinking is happening but it's it's good to know that we, so, so uh, that so in total we've got say a quarter of a billion pounds you're saying in um so i think it's definitely that's, it's that's probably my rough calculation it's around i mean i need to update the numbers i didn't have time today but it's probably around 200 million pounds and then like the sort of the housing fund so a lot of the other rest of our reserves is basically related to housing so it, it's sort of um buy to let uh not buy to let sorry you know when the council sell properties so that's generated a lot of money yeah uh, there's various you know hra funds as well um and then there's also asset sales whenever we sell buildings that also generates a lot of cash as well um so in total our reserves uh, are around the 500 million mark not all of that can we can be spent on anything there are rules like, for example school reserves you know you can't spend school reserves on on much else um but some of these these pockets, uh, especially new homes bonus, there are no strings attached, and you could you could spend new homes bonus whatever you wanted to. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And and the section one hundred six can be repurposed with the developer. You go to the developer and say we want to spend it on this and get an agreement from them. As long as they agree, you could do it. So there is yeah. that kind of flexibility. So we, we're coming. We've come to the end of our program. Andrew, are you going to be? Uh, live tweeting from the results should we be watching out for your um, twitter account so sort of... in theory, uh when you're in in the counting center you're not supposed to carry your phone around uh but i suspect it but might you... be a little bit easier because the referendums there are fewer rules but if it was a normal yeah, election um then then you can't just you know at the table start tweeting but you can walk to a corner or something so yeah i, I will tweet tomorrow the results cool. So we'll, we'll, we'll all be watching out for your live tweeting. Um, it'd be interesting to see parts of the borough might be celebrating, other parts yeah. might be reflecting, but we'll, we'll wait for that um, announcement. Um, sort of, it'd, be, it'd be good if you could do a live video. <laughs> I don't know, and do a bit of commentary. Right, you, can do it, you can do it from, you know, sort of uh, outside yeah. the secure area yeah. where the press will, cool. will be, um, but yeah. No problems. So, uh, so we've come to the end of the program. Thank. I just want to thank every all our viewers and listeners for tuning in, and uh, thank you for watching the Weekly Politics Show on Relax Radio. I'm Councillor Premier with co-host Councillor Andrew Rood. Enjoy the weekend, and thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Bye.